Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to learn what is a JSON Web Token and what are the three parts that together make a JSON Web Token. We are also going to learn about Base64 encoding. Let's quickly head over to jwt.io, that is the URL, and let's quickly talk about JSON Web Tokens. So what are JSON Web Tokens? In a nutshell, JSON Web Tokens are an open industry standard for representing claims between two parties. So this is the critical part. They are tokens for representing claims. So as the word JSON means, they are a JSON payload that one party will send to another and the receiving party will be able to make sure that the payload that they received was effectively sent by another party that they know well. The key property of JSON Web Tokens is that they are self-verifiable, meaning that if you want to make sure that the JSON Web Token is valid, you only have to look at the token itself, because the token comes with a cryptographic signature. We don't have to contact a third-party server to validate the token, and we don't have to keep it in memory between requests. Let's go into this in detail. So what does a JSON Web Token look like? What you are seeing here as you scroll down in jwt.io, this string here is a JSON Web Token. Notice the colors, we have here three strings separated by dots. Each JSON Web Token has three parts. The first part that corresponds to this part in red is a JSON payload that specifies certain technical properties of the JSON Web Token that we are going to cover later on. So how do we get from the JSON header object in red to the string in red? Base64 is just a practical format for encoding data and sending it over the network so it's not encryption, it's just an encoding. The 64 characters of this encoding were chosen because they are represented in the same way in many different encodings. So we are sure that this string created in a machine using UTF-8 encoding will also be correctly read in another machine that uses a very different encoding. The two machines don't have to know about which encoding each one is using, which is the key benefit of using Base64. We are going to see this encoding in action in a moment. Right now, let's move on to the second part of the JSON Web Token. The second part of the JSON Web Token is here between the two dots, so it's the payload. This is the claim. It could be a claim about anything, but JSON Web Tokens are very frequently associated to authentication. So for example, here we have the property sub. This stands for subject. The content of the sub property is essentially a technical identifier that uniquely identifies a user. So it's not the user email, it's some technical identifier that would not help an attacker if the JSON Web Token was stolen. More on this later, right now let's talk about the third part of a JSON Web Token. That's the signature. This is the part that ensures that the payload was effectively sent by a given party. Let's then see each of these three parts of JSON Web Tokens step by step. Let's keep in mind the high level goal of a JSON Web Token it's to send a claim between two parties in a way that the receiving party can be sure that the information was effectively sent by who they think it was sent. 